Mm. Can't with the goat legs. everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my June wrap-up for 2023. I read a total of 12 books this month, so I am going to be breaking it up into two separate parts, six books each, so this is part one. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have, we're going to start off with a bang. It is The Stolen Air by Holly Black. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is the spin-off series of The Folk of the Air, and this follows Oak and Seren. The first thing I want to say about this book is just not the goat legs. And if you've read this book, you know what I'm talking about. It just... Mm can't with the goat legs. I actually really liked this. I know that a lot of people are a little bit disappointed by this book because many people go into it thinking that they're going to get more of Jude and Carden. So as long as that is not your expectation, you probably will really enjoy this. If you do go into it thinking it is just going to be more Jude and Carden, you are going to be solely disappointed. There are mentions here and there of their characters, but there are no cameos of the two in this. So to go into it knowing that, and then it's a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is all from Seren's point of view, which I found to be a very interesting character. She's definitely an unlikable character, but I couldn't help rooting for her. I am really hoping that we get more of Oak's point of view in the second book because I really loved his character. There is a lot of betrayal and backstabbing in this, which I am a sucker for, so I ate every bit of this up. I will say that I don't particularly believe that there is any chemistry between Oak and Seren. I think that it was more of a like frenemies vibe than a relationship vibe, but I am very intrigued to see where the story goes in the second book and I will definitely be picking it up because that cliffhanger got me questioning some things. The next book I'm going to talk about is Nick Blake and The Remarkables, The Manifestor's Prophecy by Angie Thomas. This is her new middle grade fantasy series that she has released, and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. So this follows Nick Blake, who is a remarkable, which means she has magical powers, but she lives in the unremarkable world. Her biggest wish is to learn more about her remarkable abilities, but her father believes that she is not ready, and then on the night of her 12th birthday, birthday, some events occur that lead her on a adventure with her best friend JP and the newest member of their gang, Alex, and it's kind of the story of that. This was a super quick and easy read. It's a lot of fun and definitely a good setup for the rest of this series. I do think that it was a little bit info dumpy at the beginning, which made it a little bit slow to get into, but the cast of characters is really cute and I really liked Nick as our main character. I really liked exploring her friendship and family dynamics as the story progressed. There is a lot of black history sprinkled into this, which I do think would be good for middle grade students who are learning about these things in their classroom. I listened to this on audiobook, so I think that definitely boosted my enjoyment of the story. I will say that there is a lot of telling and not showing in this, but again, it is for a middle grade audience, so that does kind of make sense. I am curious to see where the story goes from here, and I am intrigued with where it is going, so I probably will pick up the second book once it is released. But yeah, I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It was cute and it was fun. Next up, I have Vengeance Road by Aaron Bowman. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Kate, who, after the death of her father, disguises herself as a male to go and get revenge on the gang who killed him. This was such a forgettable book for me, which was very disappointing because the concept sounds like it would be really interesting, but I found myself becoming very bored with the story very quickly, which was surprising because I am usually a sucker for revenge plots. I just found it to be very predictable. I I didn't really care about any of the characters, which made it a little bit hard to engage with the story. I did like Kate, though. She was very headstrong and was solely focused on her revenge. Honestly, her and Will, who is one of the brothers she teams up with, are the only reason I'm giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It would have been lower if it wasn't for them. The romance was not good, in my opinion. I just did not care for Jesse, the love interest. He got on my nerves real quick, and I think that the representation of the tribe in this was questionable at best, so 2.5 out of 5 stars. Not my favorite thing I read this month. The next book I have is Broken Paradise by W.L. Knightley. 
and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. This follows Rowan, whose best friend Jessica disappeared 10 years ago, which shattered her entire world. Then a mysterious young girl with a strange resemblance to Jessica shows up outside the diner she works at. This convinces Rowan that the little girl is somehow connected to Jessica. She decides to enlist the help of Tyler, her ex-boyfriend who is now a cop, and Logan, who is Jessica's ex-boyfriend, who the town thinks is the one who murdered her all those years ago, to try to figure out if Jessica is still alive and if this little girl is connected to her. So I started this book in April and I did not finish it until June because I just felt like it was dragging so much. It became very repetitive very quickly and I was just bored honestly. I thought that all of the characters were very one-dimensional, they had no personalities whatsoever. I truly did not care about any of them. I just wanted to find out if this little girl was connected to Jessica in any way. There is apparently many more books in this series but I honestly do not know if I'm going to pick them up because I just I just didn't care. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is The Witch and the Vampire by Francesca Flores and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars as well. So this follows Ava and Kay who were best friends until one night there was an attack on their town that leaves Kay's mother dead and Ava as a vampire. Now two years later Kay is about to graduate into a full flame witch and she's going to dedicate her life to killing vampires. For the last two years Ava has been trapped in a very tall tower by her mother who is holding her captive until another vampire attack occurs and she ends up escaping and runs into Kay in the middle of a forest. Kay ultimately blames Ava for her mother's death and will stop at nothing to get her revenge. So this is actually a Rapunzel retelling which I am very sad I ended up giving such a low rating to because I am a sucker for fairy tale retellings. I eat them up every time but I, I don't think that this should qualify as a Rapunzel retelling in my opinion. Rapunzel is one of my favorite fairy tales and to be told that I'm getting a sapphic Rapunzel retelling made this to be one of my most anticipated books but I was so disappointed. This book was such a meh book for me. It was so slow. I just didn't care about either of these characters or their romance. They literally had one kiss throughout the entire book and it was like not good. I also didn't really understand why Kay blamed Ava for her mother's death. The evidence was flimsy at best and it honestly turned me off Kay as a character. The cover is gorgeous though so I'll give it that. Ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars. It wasn't for me but maybe you'll enjoy it so pick it up if you want a sapphic Rapunzel retelling. I do this because it's not. Next up I read Enter the Body by Joy McCullough and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows the famous dead woman of Shakespeare's plays as they go over their stories and take control of them, retelling the ending how they wish it would have happened. So the first half of this book dragged for me. I didn't really care. I got hooked once the women started retelling their stories and getting to change the endings. That's when I became fully invested in the story. I think that the way the book was set up was really interesting. It's kind of like a screenplay. It was very quick and short, which I really enjoyed. I actually listened to it on audiobook, so it was interesting to hear the characters' emotions come through. I really loved how it was a full cast audio and how each character kind of had their moment to shine. I think the thing that bothered me the most was one of the characters, Lavinia, never got to share her story because, you know, spoiler, her tongue is cut out in her play. She never got to retell her story, which kind of sucked, honestly. I kind of wish that they, like, could read her mind or something in order for her to retell how she passed away or did not pass away, you know? But that's, like, a minor detail that I did not personally agree with. But overall I do think that this was a unique way to tell these women's stories and I like how they got to rewrite it and then not have men control their lives as much, which was nice because down with men. But yeah, I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, fine. so those are the first six books that I read for the month of June 2023. If you are interested in the other six books, then part two will be up shortly on my channel, so you can go check that out. And let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye!